afternoon. My name is Vanessa, and I will be your conference operator today. At this time, I would like to welcome everyone to the Social Media Monday LinkedIn conference call. All lines will remain open throughout the conference. If you would like to mute your line, you may do so by pressing star six on your telephone keypad. If you wish to speak, please press star six again to unmute your line. Thank you. I will now like to turn the call over to Ms. Suzanne Knizner. Please go ahead, ma'am. Thanks, Vanessa. Hi, everyone. My name is Suzanne Knizner, and I'm glad that you're part of today's LinkedIn Making It Work For You event. Um, I am the project coordinator with Campaign Consultation, and I'm going to um, go over a few roles before we start our presentation. Um, as Vanessa said, we are going to keep this call open. However, if you would mind, if you don't mind uh, muting your individual line by pressing star six, that would be very helpful. Um, and we will remind you later on in the call to uh, star six again when we're ready to participate. Um, if you do have a loss of connection either through WebEx or on the phone, just simply log back in as you did originally and or call back in. And if you want to make a note of the um, conference call line, it is on your screen right now. That would be wonderful. Um, the one thing we do ask is that you do not put us on hold. Um, sometimes there's background music, and while that's lovely, we don't want it as part of our presentation. Um, please note that this event is being recorded and will be available following our uh, event, as well as all of the links that we go over will be available at the conclusion of this presentation. Now I will turn it over to Michelle Bond, Project Manager for Campaign Consultation, who will introduce today's presenters. Thanks so much, Suzanne, and welcome everyone to our Social Media Monday web shop series. Um, today we're focusing on LinkedIn and um, how it can work for you. So hoping for um, a really great session and um, lots of input from you all as well. And today we have some fantastic presenters with us. Um, we have Elizabeth Matthews, who is the VISTA Alumni and Outreach Support Specialist at the Corporation, um, and we do a lot of work with VISTA. I'm glad to have her. We have Danielle Rick, who is our Social Media Specialist here at Campaign Consultation. And we also have Stephanie Ross, who is our e-specialist at Campaign Consultation. So um, we'll be also hearing from a few VISTAs as well on the call later on. And so, as always, we're thrilled to have some VISTA guests, guests to help us today. And with that, I'll, I'd like to uh, turn it over to Liz Matthews to say a few words to get us started. Hi, everyone. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us for the call. Um, we appreciate you doing that, and hopefully you will walk away having learned a lot more about LinkedIn when you first logged on. Um, I just wanted to say a special thanks to our guests who are uh, sharing their experiences on LinkedIn with you on the call today, Amy, Alan, and Robert. So thank you all for your role in Social Media Monday. And um, with that, I will let you all take it away. Thank you, Michelle. Great. Thanks, Liz. Um, and for those of, us who are, those of you who are joining us again, uh, thank you so much. Uh, we really appreciate you being with us each month. And for those of you who are new to us, welcome. And um, just to give you a brief overview of what we try to do with Social Media Monday, um, essentially provide hands-on access to those of you in the national service community on a variety of platforms that are out there and that can hopefully um, be applied to what you're doing in your VISTA project and in your service and really help you do what you're trying to do in your service better um, and in an easier way. And wherever possible, as we mentioned, we have VISTAs on hand to show us how they're using these tools every day um, in what they're doing in their service. So um, with that, I'll turn it over to Danielle, who will get us started with today's agenda. Thanks so much, Michelle. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. We're really happy to have you on the call today. Today's agenda, we're going to talk about why LinkedIn, why should you even care, and how to get started on LinkedIn. We'll introduce you to our guests, who are going to talk about their experiences with the social media tools. We're going to walk you through how to create your profile, utilizing your contact list. We'll talk about searching for a job, and then social networking through groups on LinkedIn. I'm not sure if a lot of people know that they can use LinkedIn as a social networking tool, so we're going to make sure we share that with you today. And 
So let's go ahead and advance the slide. And we want to take a temperature of the room, please. And we have our poll on LinkedIn. And there's just a few questions there that you should see on the right. And we want to know, are you or will you be looking for a job in the next six months? Have you been using the Internet for your job search? Do you have a LinkedIn account? And if you do have a LinkedIn account, are you using it to stay connected, network, or job hunt? And once we get this reading, we'll be better able to assist you in this particular web shop. We think we have a really good day uh, lined up for you at the web shop. We want to make sure that we're addressing all of your concerns particularly. So go ahead and fill out that uh, poll, if you will. And then we can go ahead and advance the slide. So um, one of the things we want to talk about are tips for LinkedIn. So if we would mind advancing. Thank you. Tips for LinkedIn. And one of the first things that we want to talk about is you want to own a profile that truly represents you. Um, this is not a time to um, make up a persona. This is your professional representation. You want to list your current and past positions in education, along with your tenure there. And this helps connect you with the right people and opportunities for you. Add a profile photo. It always hurts. I mean, helps, rather. People never forget a face. And a summary paragraph. Think of this as your professional elevator pitch. I'm sure you all have heard about the 23-second elevator pitch, so you want to add that there. And then ensure that your connections represent your real-world network. On Twitter and Facebook and uh, Yelp and some of the other places where you may be, you may have a lot of friends that you're, you let into your network, but you don't really know who they are. LinkedIn is not the place that you want to do that. You want to make sure these people are actually in your network. You know who they are. You've either worked with them, or you went to school with them, or possibly want to work for them. And then the last thing is leverage the power of your LinkedIn network. I really don't think people are taking advantage of LinkedIn the way they they where they could. Uh, join groups, join discussions, go go back and look for past employers. Look for people that you may want to work with in the future, folks that you want to maybe volunteer with in the future. Post a question. Get answers. Tap into those experts in your connections and who may be one or two people removed from some of your connections. And we're going to show you how to do that a little bit later on. We do have the poll results. And so, Suzanne, uh, let us know how we're doing today. Who, who's in our audience? Well, it looks like 76% uh, of you will be looking for a job in the next six months. So that's really something. That's really something. Um, and it looks like 81% of you are using the internet in your job search. And it looks like 57% of you do have a LinkedIn account, which is great. And we're going to help you figure out how to, you know, best utilize that resource. And if you do not have a LinkedIn account, you are, or if you do have, I'm sorry, if you do have a LinkedIn account, you are using it to. Um, network as well as stay connected. Well, that's, that's fantastic. The fact that so many of you are using the Internet is a wonderful thing. Um, we're hoping that we will provide you with enough information for your job hunt and to help you with that and to use this particular LinkedIn tool to help you um, maximize what you need to do in terms of your employment efforts. So that's what we're here for. Well, the very first thing I thought we would do, if we can go ahead and advance the slide, is we are going to show you um, a video. I thought that if we could do this very That's quickly. Okay. I can answer. It's okay. I got on it. I don't know how. But I Sam, we can hear you. you. Who, who, whoever is talking right now, we can hear you. If you wouldn't mind just muting, please, because we can hear you in the background. So I thought, who better to show us about LinkedIn than LinkedIn? They have a video. It won't take that long. And so I believe I have rights now, Suzanne? Yep. I am in control. Okay. So I'm going to share my desktop. And we're going to go to a video, which is going to walk you through how to use LinkedIn. And then Ross is going to slow it down for us and go through some of these steps, step by step. Okay. Here we go. If you've ever received an email that says, join my network on LinkedIn, you've probably wondered, what is LinkedIn? A simple answer is that it's the world's largest professional network, helping people find and share opportunities every day. But how is it relevant to you? Managing your career is just one reason to join LinkedIn. As you develop your professional profile, you establish an authoritative resource on your experience and capabilities that lets people find you when they search the Internet. 
In two minutes, you'll be up and running with the most important page on the web you'll ever have. Do you know what people find when they Google your name? With LinkedIn, you'll have more control over what appears in Google results, and having a robust profile encourages people to approach you with opportunities. Many of your contacts are already on LinkedIn, and you can reconnect just by uploading your address book. This lets you stay in touch even as your contacts change jobs and email addresses. Your reputation is summed up by the relationships you've developed over your career. LinkedIn helps you maintain these relationships authentically. In addition, when you want to make new business connections, you can find people using LinkedIn's search tool, then see who you know in common. This makes it easy to request an introduction from your trusted connections. You can also join a LinkedIn group where professionals in your field discuss issues and solve problems related to your industry. Link to your Twitter account to share tweets with your professional network, both from LinkedIn to Twitter and vice versa. And use LinkedIn's mobile application to stay current with your network wherever you are. These are just a few features that help you get the most out of LinkedIn. Whether you're on the go, LinkedIn keeps you in touch with the people that matter to your career. And since signing up is free, LinkedIn just might be the best investment you'll ever make in your career. So I'm hoping that that um, little demonstration was enough to give you an idea of how to get started. And I am going to give the rights back to, to Suzanne. Oh, Suzanne already has them. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and advance the slide. And Stephanie Ross, you there, Steph? Yep, yep, I'm here. Thank you. You're welcome. Stephanie is going to take us through a little slower pace about how to get started on LinkedIn. Great. Thank you so much, Danielle. Um, so signing up for LinkedIn is super simple. Um, you just go to LinkedIn.com, and you land on the home page, which looks like this little screenshot we have here. And you enter in your first name, your last name, your email address, and a password. And, and it's, you just click Join Now. And Suzanne, if you can forward the slide. And on the next screen, um, it, it, you start developing a little bit part of your profile. Um, so here you state if you're employed, if you're a business owner, you're looking for work, um, working independently or a student. So in the drop-down box, you'll select which one you are. And then you'll enter in your company name if you're with a company. Um, and the company name, it helps LinkedIn um, connect you with colleagues and friends. Um, so it's, it's important to make sure you fill this out as best you can. Um, for your job title, enter what your title is. And, um, and how LinkedIn uses this is they can recommend groups um, that you may be interested in, where you can share ideas and information with your peers. Um, and then you select your country and your zip code. And the zip code is really important as well because it's important that LinkedIn knows um, that, that make sure you, they connect you with people close by you and not in a completely other state. So um, then you press continue. And the next slide. Um, they offer the ability, and this is really important, usually, and I admit, this is my personal thing, I usually skip right over this, but for LinkedIn, this is important, um, because it's about connecting with your colleagues and connecting with friends, and LinkedIn, just like the name, it's about being linked with other people so that, you know, they may know somebody that you may need to know, and you may need to know somebody, and I mean, it's, it's cool. So, if you have the time, I would recommend you go through your address book and just you know, build that network. But if you don't, you can just click the skip this step and it'll take you to the next page um, where you need to confirm your email address. Um, so you just go to your email and you'll find the email that they sent you and you press the link in there and it'll take you to the next slide. Okay. Um, and I have this screen, this, it's two screenshots. So the first image at the top um, is what you'll see when you click the link in your email where you'll need to just click the button confirm, and then the picture below that shows you where you just need to log in with the information you told them the first time. And then on the next screen, it will take you to, and you can switch things again. It'll take you to your home page. And here, um, when I created my, my test account that I'm showing you, um, I did not do the contact list. So it shows me, it prompts me, it reminds me that I can um, connect with my address book and, and see 
Um, and then right below there, you'll see network activity. Um, this is a great, it's very similar to Facebook. Um, and you can actually, Danielle, probably, well, this has already been talked about a little bit, where you can connect it with Twitter. Um, so it's, it's similar to the Facebook Twitter update your network. Um, and, and I want to point out one thing that just joined LinkedIn. Um, underneath there, you'll see the colleagues for campaign consultation. Um, because I put that I worked for campaign consultation, it connected me with um, our page that we have where I can connect with colleagues. Um, and that's super important. Um, so then the next slide, one more. Um, if you up at the top navigation, you can click profile. And especially when you have a new account, this is really important that you go to your profile page. And you're going to want to add in a picture, like Danielle said, because it's really important that, you know, that people identify you with an image. Um, and you can update. You can say what you're working on. You can add in your education, what your past experience is. Um, add in a website, what's your Twitter address. Um, just fill in as much as you can of this, because this is super important. And just as um, Danielle had said, showing your authentic true self for, for who you are. So. Um, that about covers it, just for the simple startup process. So um, I'll hand it back over to Danielle. Or Danielle. <laughs> Thank you, Ross. I really appreciate it. Um, we are going to – I'm going to hand it over to Michelle. She's going to introduce you to our guests. And then we're going to take you one by one through those steps that you shared with us in real time with our VISTAs and our VISTA leaders. Great. Thank you so much. Um, as you mentioned, we uh, love having VISTAs with us to um, show us the ropes with some of these, these things here. And so today we have um, two VISTAs and a VISTA leader with us. Um, first is uh, Amy uh, Castanel. Uh, hi, Amy. Hi. And we also have Robert Argue. Hey, hi. Michelle. Hey, thanks for being with us. Mm -hmm. And we also have Alan Tidmore, who's a VISTA leader. Hi, Alan. Hey, I'm here. Thank Great. You. So uh, thank you all for being with us, and we'll get to hear from each of you uh, in just a second. All right, so let's go ahead and advance the slide. We're going to start with you, Amy. She's our resident expert. <laughs> she laughs every time I call her that, but she is our resident expert. So um, Amy has created her own personal LinkedIn page, and then she also created one for the organization that she worked with. And first, we're going to just uh, talk a little bit, Amy, about just overall arching. Why do you use LinkedIn? Um, well, when I was in college, um, the woman who worked in the career development office she used to always say, um, "If you're not networking, if you're, it's either networking or not working." Um, so a, a few years ago, I signed up on LinkedIn because I thought it was a good way to connect with people that I had worked with in the past. And um, I, I wasn't looking for a job then, but I, I knew eventually that I was going to be looking for a job again. And I didn't want to lose touch with any of the people that I had worked with before because you never know who might be useful in the future. Exactly. And so specifically for VISTAs or anyone in national service positions, why do you think LinkedIn is a good fit for them? Well, I think for VISTAs, um, since we are usually at small organizations and we're scattered all over the country, it's really important to build a network, a professional network, uh, where you can, you know, contact people who are in a similar field or contact people who are um, potential volunteers or even potential donors. I mean, I think LinkedIn is great for just building a network from someplace really small. I absolutely agree. And you took it one step further, which I'm really impressed with, and you created a page for your organization. And why is that important, do you think? Um, well, I was talking to one of my brother's friends who lives here in Atlanta, and she is um, really big into volunteering, but she was overextended. And so I was trying to get her to volunteer for our organization because we're a volunteer-run organization. Mm -hmm. um, and she, was, she told me, you know, I'm too busy to commit to it, but – if you, and she suggested that I create a profile for the organization on LinkedIn because she said that since I'm connected to her, she could connect me to all the other people that she's connected to, um, and hopefully I can get more volunteers that way. So that's really the reason why I created the group page on LinkedIn. It was so that I could basically expand my reach for volunteers. That's great. That's a, that's a great tool and, and resource for using this particular tool. So what we're going to do now, we can go ahead and advance the slide, and then we are going to give rights over to you, Amy, and you're going to take us um, on a tour of your personal LinkedIn page. Okay. 
So if you wouldn't mind sharing your desktop with us up on the left-hand side. Okay. I think I did it. Yep, you did. It's, it's loaded. Okay. Okay, here we are. And this is my... Um, we're not quite there. Are we. Oh, sorry. There. Nope, we're there now. Okay. <laughs> Uh, well, this is my personal LinkedIn page, um, and right here it has my title, Communications Coordinator at LVA or LVMA, so do I see volunteers with Metro Atlanta. Um, what exactly did you want me to Well, why don't well, you tell us some of the key features. What do you use on LinkedIn um, the most? I see that you are posting, you are adding comments, you are adding links, so you are using that feature. Yeah. Um, well, for me, um, when I was looking for a job, it was really important for me to have my uh, work experience up to date. And one of my friends told me she, that she looked at her LinkedIn profile as sort of like a living resume. Right. So you always want to have all of your information as current and up to date as possible so that, you know, if anybody is searching your name on Google or anything, when your LinkedIn profile comes up, it won't be anything old or, you know, something that you have to correct. Right. When they I, you. I liked um, that area about your activity so you can show people. Um, it's interesting since we did our rehearsal, I see that you joined the AmeriCorps. I did. Yeah. I'm very impressed with that. <laughs> I thought that was a great idea. I was like, oh, my God, why haven't I done that already? That's a great. And tell people why. Why is it a good idea to join groups? We'll talk about it a little bit more. But from your perspective, why is that a good idea? Um, well, I'm, I'm, all, I'm a member of some other groups like my alumni group and uh, sort of job searching groups. And, but, and it didn't even occur to me at first to join the AmeriCorps group, but it's an important thing to join groups because that's how you can connect with people who aren't already in your personal network. Exactly. And so what's your best advice to give a VISTA when they're creating their own personal page? Um, I think try and be as thorough as possible. There's uh, sort of like a, a progress bar on your on your um, private LinkedIn profile. Obviously, the public one doesn't have the progress bar. But... Um, the, the one when you're creating yourself where it says edit my profile, should I go to that? Sure. Um, it has a little progress bar that tells you, you know, you have, there it is, 80% profile is complete list. So I'm not even 100% complete yet. Um, but that really helps. It gives you suggestions on what you can do to make your profile more complete. And as much completion as possible is obviously better than not. Because even if um, you feel like you don't have that much experience or that much to say on your LinkedIn profile, it just looks really good that you're um, putting yourself out there in a really, you know, organized way. So stay right there. Before we move over to the group page, um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if everyone can see what she's talking about. On the right-hand side in the middle of the page, it says 80% profile completeness. And the only thing that really she needs to send us up is um, adding a summary adding her specialties if she likes, and asking for recommendations. And when we get to Robert, Robert's going to show us how he uses the recommendations. But these are um, areas that, you know, her, her page is still very vibrant and very full at 80%. So she's, she's doing great at 80%. If you want to get to 100, that's what she was talking about, the three areas for her. Now, you know, had she not put previous education down, that would have come up as something that needed to be filled out. So LinkedIn is very good at helping you finish your profile and getting a nice, robust page. And now if you would take us over to your group page, I'm so impressed with the fact that you started this. Yay. <laughs> well, everybody should join. Um, Absolutely. Everyone <laughs> in the call should join. Absolutely. I agree. So this is the page that I created for um, LVA. And the first page is just a group profile page, and it gives, like, a brief description of the organization. And um, it, I provided links to our website, our blog, our Twitter page, and our Facebook fan page, just in case somebody who was, you know, involved with one of those other social media areas wants to connect with us there. Um, and then over on the um, right-hand side, there's a live link to our website and to my profile page since I'm the one who created it. Um, and then in your group page, you can create discussions. Um, and I've created a few discussions, one for National Volunteer Week, one for um, – an announcement about something that we were doing here at LVA and then one for Earth Day. 
and you can, you know, make what your discussion either a feature discussion or just a regular discussion. And the idea is that you create a discussion and it gets sent to the inboxes of all the people who are members of your group. And then people can comment on them or, you know, people can start a new discussion. Our group page is really new, so we don't have that much activity, but I'm trying to keep it as vibrant as possible. And, and the other good thing about that is when you start a discussion, it will end up on the home page of your contacts, so it will be in their thread as well. Right. So in no time, Amy, you're going to have a bunch of people coming. <laughs> so you'll be overwhelmed with the comments. Good. I hope so. Great. Well, thank you for that. I appreciate it. We're going to take right back. Um, anything else before we go, Amy, that you wanted to add? Um, no, I, I'm, I'm just happy to, you know, give my opinion about LinkedIn. I think it's really a good tool, and, you know, if at first it doesn't feel like you're making much traction, I think over time, you know, having your name show up in people's inboxes is never a bad thing unless That's you're exactly doing something right. horrible. That's exactly right. <laughs> we, won't, we don't want to be doing anything horrible in the right. but we're <laughs> on LinkedIn. Yes. <laughs> Great. Fantastic. So if we would advance the slide. So Robert um, is looking for a position, correct, Robert? And we're going to be using LinkedIn for that, correct? That is correct, yes. And up to now, how have you been using your page? I've been using it primarily to uh, build up a professional network and to document uh, some of the things that I have been working on and am currently working on, uh, such as uh, this particular uh, web seminar. All right. Thank you. We appreciate that. <laughs> we appreciate that. So how about if we go on over to your page and you show us your page and show us what you've been using. We can go ahead and advance the slide, and we're going to give you right. And then if you wouldn't mind sharing your desktop with us up on the left-hand side. Uh, not cooperating at the moment. It's not cooperating? No. Just a okay, second. I'll try to go out and go back in. Oh, here we go. And, and one of the things that um, I'm going to ask Robert to show everybody is we talked about a little bit earlier, and that's that recommendation. I think it's very important that people um, ask for that. But you go ahead, Robert. You're in control. Show us. Okay. Well, as I said, I have uh, documented that I am participating in a VISTA web seminar using LinkedIn to help you find your next position. And I have a couple of current titles. <coughs> Um, project coordinator, which is basically what I do here as a VISTA at the Southwestern Michigan Community Action Agency. And as far as an employer is concerned, I put down that I am a VISTA with the Corporation for National and Community Service. I put in some of the things that I've done in the past, as well as my education background. And I put in a Quick summary, because I'm not only looking for jobs in the nonprofit field, but I've also been looking um, in the legal field as well, legal support specifically. Then I put down some descriptions of some past jobs that I've had. And now the recommendation. Um, I have a direct report here at the Southwestern Community Action Agency. And one of the projects that I've been involved with in the last two years is the, um, it's called the Tri-County Earned Income Tax Credit Coalition, which oversees the uh, volunteer income tax assistance programs here in Barry and Cass and Van Buren counties in southwestern Michigan. And the person who wrote this recommendation is what is called a site coordinator who is at the individual tax sites and basically running the show while he's there. Well, he's the site coordinator for the locations in Berrien County, so I asked him to make a recommendation, and he was happy to oblige. And so what I want to point out for people is that it really is a one-stop shop with LinkedIn in terms of a recommendation. Um, you, it's just a one click away, and we'll, we'll, we'll go over that a, a little bit later on. Now, I see um, that you've joined some groups as well, Robert. That is correct. Just joined AmeriCorps. <laughs> <laughs> then um, the Hayworth College of Business is the um, college that I went to at Western Michigan University. 
uh, litigation support once again, trying to keep my feet in with um, the legal support field, as well as NAILS, which is a national organization. And to keep in the nonprofit side, uh, Idealist is an international uh, group, which is in support of Idealist.org, which is a website where you can get ideas on how to run nonprofit programs, look for jobs, and just connect with the nonprofit field uh, worldwide. And this Young Nonprofit Professionals Network was thanks to some vistas that I work with. We have a sister agency, the Kalamazoo Poverty Reduction Initiative. Now, Robert, how are you using, how have you been using LinkedIn um, for your job search? Well, primarily I've been, up until the last uh, month or so, I've been primarily building my network. Okay. Um, just seeing who I know and who I know and who knows some people who would be helpful to me in uh, a future job search. Okay. We're going to give you some strategic ways to go about looking for a job in a little bit. We're going to – is there anything final that you would like to add? We're going to take these rights back and hand them over to uh, Michelle and Alan in a bit. Anything else you'd like to add before we go? Mm -hmm, not that I can think of, no. Okay, great. So we're going to go ahead and take those rights back. It's going to get, take, give us some minutes grab those back from you. And then we're going to go ahead and advance the slide once you're able to. Great. Back to Alan. And um, Alan, welcome. I know Michelle has some questions for you. Okay. Thank you very much, um, Robert and Danielle. And while, I mentioned, while we're speaking, too, I, I see that there's some activity happening over in the chat, and I didn't get to mention it outright, but please feel free to ask questions, discuss with one another. There will be a, a period later in the call to answer questions specifically, but, you know, there's no reason why uh, we can't be doing it as we go as well. All right. So, Alan, um, thanks again for being with us. And why don't you tell us a little bit about how you use LinkedIn specifically in your role as a VISTA leader? Okay. Um, I started using it as a form of Seeking employment. My Alan, I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, okay. Everyone, again, we ask that you press star six to mute your line. We're getting some background noise from someone's office. Thank you so much. Go ahead, Alan. My son was thinking with Habitat, and I was going to seek employment. We also have been using social media uh, and introducing social media to the affiliates on an ongoing basis. Uh, and so that's basically why I started my LinkedIn page. That's, that's great. And have you found it um, a good way to stay in touch with not only the other Habitat affiliates, but others in the national service community? Yes. Uh, I don't have... I will share my page now or whenever you're writing. But I, since I just started, I have started collecting uh, connections and um, it's working out pretty good. Well, that's great. Well, then why don't we um, go and take a look since um, I'm sure that you've as you're, as you're populating your page, um, there'll be some things to point out as well. So I think, Ben, we'll just turn this back over to um, Danielle, and she can walk through your page with you. Okay. Great. So, um, Alan, we're going to need you to share your desktop with us up on the left-hand corner. Okay. And it takes a minute for it to load up. Great. So you now have rights. Okay. Great. We see your page. And you can see I only have 10 connections so far, but uh, since I'm new, uh, that's one of the reasons I wanted to get on the social media today to learn. Um, 
What would you like to name this guy? Well, mm -hmm. let's talk, uh, there have been some um, chats about titles. And if you would go back up and show us your, your title and how you listed it. We want to talk about... Um, so you have that your, current, your current post, and um, one of the things that you had up there a while back was that you were also with the corporation. You had both of those up, correct? Correct. But after thinking more about it, I am paid directly from the Corporation for National Community Service, mm -hmm. but I'm on loan from them and work directly for Habitat. And, so, and I, I think it's okay, to be honest with you, to list both. And, and the reason why is not so much really who pays you as much as the organizations who you're currently connected with professionally. So okay. I think it's okay to use both, and I'll tell you why. It actually opens up your network to more people because, um, obviously, you're connected with the Habitat for Humanity, and that's one group in and of itself, and that website is there. But you're also connected with the corporation because you are a leader with the corporation, and that brings a whole wealth of people that you could be connected with just via that organization. And so let's go on up, all the way up. Okay. And in the search box on the right-hand side, you'll see something that says people with a drop-down menu. And let's go over there. That, let's hit that drop-down menu before you even type anything. So hit that drop-down menu. Okay. And put in um, company. And then let's see if the corporation is listed in LinkedIn. Go ahead and type out the full name right there. And you can see, you guys, as he starts typing the corporations, and there it is. You don't have to go very far. They start popping up. Now go ahead and click on that and okay. hit the search button. Yep. And so already you can see um, they have 305 total employees right now and 25, although you only have 30 people, 25 of them are already in your network. If you look under on the left-hand side, you see current employees, it's 305, and 25 are already in your network. So you're already connected to 25 people, which then can connect you to more people, which then broadens out your network of folks who you could be communicating with. Okay. So, um, and I see there's Robert under your connection. <laughs> so I'm glad you guys connected. And so this then allows you to have more than one group. You can look for discussions that the corporation has set up. You can join some of their discussions. You can join their group. And we can go over that a little bit um, later. But I think it's a, a great idea to not just support Habitat, where you are a leader or a VISTA on loan, but also the corporation because that will open your net and, 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 and broaden your horizons to a larger pool of people, if that makes sense. Okay, great. All right. Well, we're going to grab right back from you. Thank you so much, Alan. Okay. Well, we're going to go, um, it's going to take a minute. Suzanne's going to give me back the rights. And I'm going to show you guys some tricks. All right. So I'm going to share my desktop. Here we go. Okay. So this is the home page. This is ground zero for everyone. And um, here is where you can share information in this little box that says network activity. And now LinkedIn has made it possible for you to attach a link to that. And you can make it visible to everyone. Or you can click a drop-down menu and say, no, the only people that I want to have on this update are my connections. I don't want everybody to see this. You can decide to opt in or opt out of sharing this with LinkedIn simply by clicking this little box next to the Twitter icon. And as you can see today, my update was about our workshop and making sure that everybody knew that we were doing that. So I'm going to take you over to um, my profile page. And this is up here on the top, left to right, is kind of how you want to work your way through LinkedIn, the home page, your profile, contacts, groups, jobs, and then messages in inbox. And then over here with more, 
our uh, information about companies, a learning center, and all kinds of other things that you can add, applications that you can add to your LinkedIn page. So I'm going to scoot on over here to my profile. It's going to take a second to load. And um, you'll see my title, my photo. I'm at 100% completeness in terms of my profile. <laughs> Michelle's laughing at me. She's like, of course you are. <laughs> but this is why. <laughs> so I've added my current and my past, my education, and I have eight recommendations, 344 connections. I've added my website. I'm feeding my blog. I've also promoted my other blog. I'm feeding my Twitter account. And then in here, this public profile, if you ever get lost it's midway of the page on LinkedIn, this is a, a link that you can share with other people to lead them right to your resume. So let's say you're out and about and someone wants to know what your resume is or what your work experience is. You might want to remember what this little website is because you may not have access to your resume right away, but if they have access to the Internet, they have access to your professional experience. So I have a pretty long summary. It's not a 25-second elevator speech. <laughs> That's my summary, my specialties. And I've added applications to this, which are my readings. And from you can add them from Amazon. And these are things that I'm interested in, and I've added six books. You can also add events. And this comes from your home page. And these are events that I have attended or will be attending. And then I fed my WordPress blog to LinkedIn as well, and it shows up automatically. You just drop the code in, and, there, and LinkedIn will walk you through this entire process back up where I showed you more. It will walk you through this entire process and how you can add that. So, you know, you don't have to be a techie to get the uh, experience and the knowledge of adding your website. And also, I have presentations on SlideShare, and so those go here. And you can feed some of your presentations so people can see your work. Um, I've added TripTick so people know, know what trips I'm taking. And the cool thing about TripTick is when you're taking a trip, for instance, when we went to a conference in Austin, Texas, it will tell you of your contacts who lives in Austin. So you may want to actually connect with somebody in real time when you're taking a trip. Okay. So um, these are the people that have recommended me. One visible recommendation. So how do you do a recommendation? You click on here to simply request someone recommend you. You type their name. And look, LinkedIn even does the email for you. It even tells you what to say so you don't have to think of anything creative to say. You can add to this, of course. You can change it. You can delete it. But you can simply send this to them. All right, let's go back up. What are the most important things on LinkedIn, obviously, are your contacts. And so how are you using your contacts? I want to show you something. It's called network statistics. So I told you I have 344 people in my network. I'm two degrees away. That means just two people away from having 90,000-plus people in my network. I'm three people away. Look at that number. It's amazing. It's astonishing, right? So you ask yourself, well, how do I get to this 90K? How do I get there? One of the things you can do when you're working with your contacts is join groups. So if you went back to your home page and you said, well, you know, I trust everybody in my contact list. These are trusted professionals. And I'm trying to get back to the home page, but it doesn't want to go there for me. There you go. And there's Michelle Bond. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Michelle because she's somebody that I trust. And I wonder who is in her network. I can ask Michelle to recommend people to me if I start poking around and I say, boy, Michelle has some really great people in her network. I wonder if she will recommend me to a colleague, a service provider, a business partner, or one of the students that she went to school with. And you simply click go and you pick who you want her to introduce you to. It's just that simple. And then Michelle has the opportunity to say yes or no, I'm not going to introduce you to the people in my network. The other thing it does, it tells you who we have in common. We have seven people that we're sharing in our organization in common, and then there are 50 other people that's telling me that I don't know, but I might want to know. And of me, I'm one person away 
from some of from some of these other people that I could be connected to. So I could say, boy, I don't know this. This person, this Carrie person looks interesting. Michelle, would you introduce me to her? And it's one click away to be able to inter- be introduced to someone that sort of opens up your network. Now, we're running out of time, and we have a lot of stuff that we need to get to. But before I leave this area, I want to show you groups. Sorry, I was on mute. Um, I, don't, I don't want to cut you off, but I think it's a good time to, as you go through groups, yeah. to also keep in mind, one of the questions that was asked, which I think is a really good one, is, you know, how do you build out your network if you don't know a lot of people who are already on LinkedIn? If you don't know, so, so what, how do you search and how do you maximize groups and companies and things like that to build right. out your network without people that you already know um, being on there? That's a great question. One of the things that you can do, we showed you how to find groups. Um, you can find uh, people and companies up here. This is a great resource, this uh, search box up here. You could put in um, social media. That would be something that I'm interested in. If I could spell it correctly. And these are various groups that are popping up that I know that are in social media. And then I will go in, and I and we know that this one has um, 11 to 15 employees. Boy, this one's in professional training and coaching. I don't know. I might want to join them and expand my network and ask them to be invited. Actually, I thought I was in that group, but I'm not. I really do need to join them and to join that group. And once you join a group, you are now connected with everyone else in the group. How cool is that? So all of a sudden, you've gone from having five people in your network to 55, depending upon how big the group is. And you can search people. You can search by job. And I don't know if that answered your question, Michelle, or if that addressed what was in the chat box, I mean, in the um, chat room. Um, yeah, I think so. As a start, I think, you know, um, it was Amanda who was, you know, trying to maximize her use of LinkedIn, but being in a small town where she doesn't necessarily have a lot of people who are already on to then, you know, get filled out by first or second. Right. Contact. One of the things you can do is start with, if you have 10 connections, then you actually have 110 connections. So you can go ask somebody like Bob Allen, who I used to work with at Ideas, and because we're connected, I can actually see who's in Bob's group and who he's connected to. So I go and I spy. (laughs) I say, hey, Bob, you have 399 connections. We share 11 of them, but there are about 388 people that I don't know that are in your connections. So I may go look at all of the people, and I'll go see all of the people in Bob's connections, and I'll go spy in and say, well, of all those people, who might I want to be connected to? And then I'm going to ask Bob to introduce me to them, if that makes sense. And that's one way to use this one person who has 388, we only share 11. Or another way that you could do it, If you go back and you say, well, we share 11 people. When's the last time that I talked to Tom? I haven't talked to Tom in a really long time. I haven't talked to Craig. I haven't talked to Gene Columbus in about a year. So this is reminding me that there are people that were in my network when I used to work at Walt Disney World that I haven't spoken to in a really long time. You know what? Maybe I should say hi to Gene and see what he's doing and send him an uh, an, uh, We're already connected on LinkedIn. We just haven't sent anything to each other. So maybe I might want to send him an email. And just um, say hello. Send him a message. Just say, hi, Jean. Haven't spoke to you in a while. Wanted you to let, let you know what I'm doing and where I'm at. And, again, go poke around his page <laughs> and see how he's connected to some other people. The other thing you want to say is, um, what, what group is Jean in? Well, wow, come to find out. Jean and I are both in BizBash event planners. And so when you click on that and we're both in this particular group, um, have I – said anything? Have I joined a discussion? So one of the best ways to get your name out there is to start a discussion. These are all of the people in my group, and these are the different things that they're talking about. And you can do one or two things. You can follow this discussion. You can add a comment to an already established discussion. You are now, you can be connected to all of these people once you join a group, or you can start your own discussion. So um, it's a great resource to 
uh, get your name out there just by joining these groups and then by being active and actually networking the social part of LinkedIn, being active with these groups. And the other thing is you want to find events, real-time events that take place on LinkedIn and go to them. You know, I, I'm an online person. I love being online, but there's something about getting face-to-face -face with people. You just can't, you, you, you cannot not be in front of folks. So you can search for events. You can do it by area. You can also search for jobs that way, and you can set up reminders for jobs. So these are all of the events that are going to come up in Washington, D.C., right? And you can, let's talk about jobs, because I know that's important to the bulk of you guys. You can put in key search words for jobs. And do a search. And over here, you can actually do a location-based search. You can put in as much detail as you want. You can get company-specific. You can get um, location-specific. But the coolest thing about this is you can actually have them pop up on your home page based upon however you define the parameters around your job search. And then when you go back to your home page, you'll be able to see from that main page the jobs that are or are not available in your area. And you may have to play with this for a while until you refine your search to a point where you're getting what you want. As you can see, I put in producer, and there are a few positions there. I put in jobs, media, there are a few positions. And these are location-based. There were no television positions, sorry, that we did not find a match for your result. And then those are for the communications. And again, you can edit these any way you like, save them. You know, I moved, so I'll put in a new postal code, save it, and it will aggregate as they become available. Okay, so I'm going to give rights back now. Actually, no, I'm sorry, I'm going to keep rights because there's a quick, quick video, it's 47 seconds long, that I want to show you guys. And these are some exciting tips that are happening on LinkedIn. So it's going to be a little loud. Bear with me. Here we go. Updating your status or sharing news articles are easy ways to help your network learn more about you. And this builds your professional reputation. Just type a note or paste a link into the sharing box. You can then choose to make your post visible to anyone who visits your profile or just to your connections. You may also edit the sample text to include a key quote that your network might find interesting. And make sure the Twitter box is checked to publish the same content to your Twitter feed. Sharing content every day is a great way to build a reputation in your industry. Try sharing ideas, news articles, events you plan to attend, and job opportunities. Okay, great. So now I'm going to give the rights back, and um, Suzanne, you're grabbing them from me. Great. Okay, so are there any questions? We want to also remind you that we have an evaluation coming up. And Michelle can tell you a little bit more about the evaluation, and then hopefully we'll have some questions that we can go over in these last few minutes. We will have a few follow-up questions from the chat. Um, one being more of an etiquette question is, do, do you, Danielle, or Steph Ross, or any of our guests on the phone, I mean, in your opinion, what's, is it better to be introduced to somebody that you're trying to add to your network or to just add them um, and request, you know, by invitation? It, I think it's better to be introduced. Um, it, it's always, it's particularly if you're one person away. Um, when I got back from South by Southwest, I saw someone that I wanted to be introduced to and found out that um, Stephen, the owner of our company, was actually uh, linked in with them. And it's, it's a great introduction to have an introduction. Great. And there's another question I think a couple people had, and I don't know if there's a way to do this, but because you can link in your LinkedIn account to your Twitter account, I know that some folks have, you know, a Twitter account that they don't necessarily want every tweet posted to their LinkedIn account. But then a lot of those professional um, posts that you'd be making via LinkedIn, you wouldn't mind sharing via Twitter. So is there a way to do that and, and basically be able to select the tweets that you'd like connected? 
Yeah, I go one way. I go from LinkedIn to Twitter. I don't go from Twitter to LinkedIn. So if I'm going to make a post, I just check the tweet box, and it posts automatically to Twitter. But I don't have my Twitter feeds going to my LinkedIn page. I kind of keep those two worlds separate. And is there, do we have time for you to demonstrate that? I mean, I know that that was something that a lot of people were asking about. Is there just a box that you check? Yeah. Um, I would need right back. I know we only have a couple minutes, but that right. was a really popular question. Should political affiliations be hidden, someone's asking. Um, it, it, it depends. Uh, on what type of job you're applying for. Hold on while we go over here. And this box right here is where you would type whatever you want. And it's counting down for you the same way it would in LinkedIn. And if you want to share it with LinkedIn, that box is checked. If you don't oh, want to share it with them, you uncheck that box. Twitter, you mean? I mean Twitter, right? You okay, just, great. Check it to share with Twitter, uncheck not to share with Twitter. And then you, you don't have to do it going the other direction. You do not have to do it going. You can if you like, but you do not have to do it in any other um, location. And someone else asked, um, you can go ahead and grab it back for me, Suzanne. Someone else asked, um, since LinkedIn is professional, should you be connected to people that you don't know? I, I would suggest that you should look to be introduced to, to someone through someone that you do know, and you should have a purpose for the introduction. Um, it's not to build contacts, just to build contacts. If you're looking for a position, if you're looking to volunteer, if you're interested in more information about the company, then by all means, ask one of your contacts to introduce you to somebody on LinkedIn. But this is not gathering contacts for gathering contacts' sake. So once you're introduced to this person, you should have a reason um, to communicate with them. There should be some type of a, a reason to reach out to this person, and then I think it's okay. Thank you, Danielle. And I see that we, we have um, a bunch more questions. And so in the interest of time, we are going to continue this conversation. And we'll show you um, in a second that we'll be doing that on Twitter and also on the Social Media Monday page on the Vista campus. Um, right now, I'd just like to ask you all to take a, just a moment to fill out our evaluation, which will be showing up there shortly. Um, we really appreciate your feedback as we, we do these um, the last Monday of the month. And we really try to improve as we go. So. Any input you have would be greatly appreciated. Um, and also just realize that um, speaking to the, also the political question, I mean, everything that you consider in, in your role as a VISTA is also um, carries over to, to your role online. And so just when you are in digital space, remember that the same restrictions do apply regarding political um, activity and lobbying as a VISTA, whether you're doing it digitally or, you know, at your service site. A great reminder, Michelle. And we also want you all to stay safe online. There's some bullet points there, but the one that I want to point out the most is to keep your password in a secure place and don't share it with anyone. And watch what you quote say unquote online. You are still representing your organization and VISTA. And we can go ahead. If there are a lot of questions we were not able to get to concerning LinkedIn, and I just want you to know that they hold webinars and training. It's under that more button that I showed you. And you can go there. They have um, webinars every Wednesday and Thursday and Monday at 1 p.m. They just ask that you please register 24 hours in advance, and those links will be provided um, for LinkedIn at the end of this presentation. And because we could not get to everything, and just so you know, we are going to have a part two on transitioning and job employment. Um, our next Social Media Monday on the 24th, we're going to be talking about this as well. But to keep this conversation going specifically about LinkedIn, you can continue the conversation on Twitter with the hashtag LinkedInSMM. So don't forget to follow at VistaBuzz so that you can stay in the conversation on Twitter. And as always, you can find the recording of this presentation uh, view and listen to archives and also see what's coming up next on the Social Media Monday course page on the VISTA campus. Um, and I'll copy and paste that URL into the chat so you can um, access it as we go. Also, um, the upcoming VISTA Viewfinder, which is uh, VISTA's online publication, is all about um, transitioning for VISTA, so there should be some helpful resources in that as well, and we encourage you to check that out.
Emily, uh, the links for LinkedIn obviously are right there. Literary Volunteers of Atlanta, we hope you will join them. These are the links to the videos that we showed you from YouTube on LinkedIn and then the course page for the Vista Campus on Social Media Monday. And the other links that we talked about, the hashtag, thanks a phone line, our Twitter uh, uh, URL, and then also our Vista Facebook URL. Great. Well, thank you very much. Thanks again, everyone, for joining us. Um, as we said, we are eager to continue the conversation, and we'll leave this chat up for a second so that um, some of you can read some of the responses that your um, colleagues out there gave as well. And we hope you join us next time as we continue the conversation around transitioning, looking specifically at um, some job posting sites and forums out there that are uh, particular to folks who are interested in continuing um, doing social good out there next uh, next month, May 24th um, at 3 p.m. So thank you, everyone, again. Um, thanks for filling out the evaluation, and we look forward to seeing you next time.